Good afternoon and welcome to another A Push video with Mr. Pate for Barlow High School. Today we're looking at the 60s and 70s, a period of diminishing U.S. power and prestige. In the 1945 to oh, 1967 period, the United States is the hegemon of the world. It is unparalleled in its heights and it is un it's untested economically. Uh, it, it has a rivalry with the, the Soviet Union, of course, but for the non-communist world, the United States absolutely dominated military, economically, and, and in other ways as well. The United States had a lot going for it and went through a huge ride of prosperity during this time. But then by the time you get to 1968, you start to see a lot of problems. So let's go ahead and look at these, what they are. Number one, cover, the cover-up idea and the loss of trust. Vietnam. Vietnam, you have what it comes to be called the credibility gap. That's a term to know. Credibility gap. Number one, you have the Tet Offensive. You have Walter Cronkite questioning whether the war can be won. Um, the party line coming out of the White House and the Pentagon had been, we're winning the war, progress is being made, progress is being made. More and more young men going to Vietnam, more and more coming back dead or wounded. And then all of a sudden the Tet Offensive embarrasses the United States. It's the first television war, really where correspondents are nightly giving these types of updates and reports, Vietnam makes them look bad. And it's not going to end there. Not only does the Tet Offensive give rise and, and this credibility gap to the anti-war movement, but you're also going to get the Pentagon Papers. And this, of course, is something that is a Johnson-era situation, but it comes out um, uh, during the Nixon years. And it's going to embarrass Nixon. And it... Nixon gets this kind of mentality of, we've got to have a cover-up, we've got to plug the leaks with the plumbers, um, we better stop these types of leaks, it's dangerous to national security. Now, certainly, the, the, the Pentagon Papers showing, hey, you know what, they misled the public, this only increases that credibility of the gap, it only increases the intensity of the anti-war movement throughout this time. So, Vietnam is certainly, and then of course you have the eventual loss. I mean, true, they get a peace treaty, but really what's happened is the United States has left, South Vietnam falls, and it's not the peace with honor, and it's not a lasting peace, it's, it's basically a withdrawal and defeat. America had never lost in a war. Never. So this is a huge issue for the United States. The second thing is Watergate. Of course, you have early dirty tricks that go on in the Nixon White House, you have the Pentagon Papers, and the White House develops this kind of siege mentality. And then, of course, you get the bugging of the Watergate Hotel, where they have uh, McGovern's headquarters for the Democratic National Committee. And they, they bug that. They get caught in a bungled burglary. And what you're going to get is this long-term cover-up. And Nixon is going to really challenge uh, the whole, you know, well, he challenges. He defies the Supreme Court for a while. He's trying to stall out the legislative branch until they really are moving right toward impeachment and then eventually resigns in disgrace. So, first war loss, first president to resign in disgrace. He would have been impeached for certain if he hadn't resigned. And then, even later on, when you have Ford's pardon. Now, I would argue in some ways, it was a beneficial thing because it did allow the country to turn the page. And hearing the squeamish details of the Clinton-Lewinsky mess, um, it wasn't good for America to hear that stuff. And certainly, Having to hear everything from President Nixon, all the vulgarity, and uh, just relive it, relive it, it would, it would have been kind of an ongoing national nightmare. So, but, but it's going to stain Ford, and it ends up hurting Ford and costing him the next election. So these events show the Americans have an imperial presidency, which Congress starts to cut down to size, and you have this distrust of government that develops. Uh, the media is going to no longer cut slack for presidents with their infidelities and, and uh, the infirmary of um, Roosevelt. They're not going to cut slack anymore. They're going to drop the hammer and be very investigative and kind of an attack dog mentality ever after. Economic malaise. The energy crisis. Okay, so you have the 67 campaign, the Six Day War. You have the Yom Kippur War where Israel almost loses. The U.S. continues to support them as Kissinger's running foreign policy. And of course, before you had that stuff, the, um, you, you had steadfast support since 1948 with Truman of U.S. of Israel. So, uh, by the U.S. of Israel. 
So the retaliation by the OPEC nations is they quadruple the price, they boycott um, the, the United States and Europe, those they see as supporting Israel, and this is going to lead to a huge problem. And really, America had gone and always relied on cheap oil, and now this is going to be a crushing blow to the United States. Energy crisis, and there's no real quick answer or way out of this. Inflation is going to go crazy during the 1970s. It could almost be its own topic, the energy crisis and inflation. Inflation is going to be double-digit skyrocketing, you know, just going up throughout the whole decade. Stagflation, where you're having high unemployment with inflation, which normally you get one or the other, and you're trying to control them and have a balance is what the Fed is doing. But stagflation, ugh, you're having a, that terrible combination. It was very difficult to unlock. And, you know, I guess that kind of connects us to a helpless government. The government wasn't able to do anything about this. Nixon couldn't solve these problems. Um, Ford couldn't solve them, and Carter couldn't solve them. Really, it's going to take a full different set of measures from Reagan in the early 1980s to actually kind of turn the page and get past this. A helpless government. You have other things that just make the government not look like they can get that much done. You really have a helpless government. And so not only can they not solve these other problems, but Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island, you have this near super disaster nuclear situation, uh, kind of similar to what Japan has uh, had to deal with after the tsunami, where you're just on the brink of this total meltdown. Uh, you're not wanting to go to Chernobyl or worse. Three Mile Island is going to, again, just kind of show like a faultiness. And frankly, even though the whole rest of the modern world builds nuclear power plants today, the United States still won't after Three Mile Island. It really gave a great fear to the United States. Love Canal. You have a community that's built uh, on basically a toxic waste dump, and the, the state and the federal government won't do anything about it. And finally, a group of mothers are going to trap and basically kind of take hostage some of the health inspectors until they agree to move them all out of there. And so this shows, again, kind of not only is the government not getting it done, but at the same time, they're not really even knowing how to help or what to do. They appear disorganized or uncaring. And then, of course, the Iran hostage crisis is another foreign policy blow to join Vietnam. And Carter is going to you know, try all sorts of negotiations. He's going to um, attempt a, a rescue mission, which fails spectacularly. And he's unable to get the hostages released. And just to stick it to him and spite him, the Iranians release the um, hostages 20 minutes after Reagan's inaugurated. So all of these things kind of show, really, Things that even started before 1968 but come to light from January 1968 all the way through 1979, 1980, you just see a, a sinking feeling for the American public in these areas. That's all the time we have for today. Stay classy, Sam Barlow.